Hey, reversed psychology bamboozle conundrum. What's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite songs. And today I'm going to do another things video where I talk about things. Yes, I will. Um, I haven't done a things video for a while and I'm going to I'm going to do um, a things video where I talk about songs released in the past couple of weeks or so. And uh, I'm also gonna, gonna talk about other stuffs, so let's go. So, uh, I'm gonna start off by talking about songs that are not that great, nor that terrible, kinda in the middle. Starting off with the 1975 with a self-titled song. Yes, they released a song called the 1975, literally the, the name of the band themselves. And it's, uh, it's a song where there are some sad instrumentals underneath. And on top of it is a, is a spoken word passage. And it's not by any of the members. It's like a, an audio snippet. And in that spoken word passage, um, it talks about global warming, climate change. And I thought the message is really important. Uh, however... It's not really a song, it's a non-song, so um, I'm, I'm going to put it in, in the middle. Up next, Ariana Grande has a post-album single called Boyfriend featuring Social House. And it's just okay. Um, it's like any mainstream pop song out there right now, except I guess it's a little more catchier, a little bit more flavorful, and uh, the... The performance is, you know, passionate and likable. The vocals are nice. The features are meh, but um, the, the the song overall is just kind of average. We have the new ASAP Ferg tracks, Floor Seats and Wham, featuring Made in Tokyo, and uh, way better than the tracks off of um, Always Drive and Prosper. And in these songs, ASAP Ferg is kind of back at his trap rap wheelhouse. And um, these tracks are are not exactly bangers. They are rather rough and freaky. And um, they're a little average. But still, ASAP Ferg sounds way better than before. And then after that, Beyonce has a new track called Spirit off of the Lion King soundtrack, I believe. Yeah, or more like soundtracks inspired by Lion King. And it's, you know, it's theatrical, it's cinematic, it's dramatic, because it's literally a, a movie song, like, like a feature film song. And it's just okay. And I think her vocal performances isn't that great on this track. Blueface has a new song called Disrespectful, and it's pretty nasty, pretty fun, but it's um, the instrumentals are kind of average as well. And then we have Bree Runway, Big Racks featuring Brooke Candy. And it's another pretty average pop song. That's a little one note, but uh, instrumentally speaking, it's pretty sweet. Um, but um, vocally speaking, kind of one dimensional. Brockhampton has a new single, Yes. Uh, called I've Been Born Again, and it's a pretty average rap song, pretty average pop rap song with not much going on in terms of creativity and originality. Chelsea Wolfe had decided to drop two new songs, American Darkness and Be All Things, that's released like last night, and these two songs are also ballads that are kind of acoustic, Kind of slow, kind of quiet and moody and spacey. And it just sounds like Chelsea Wolfe isn't in her strong suit on these tracks. Because these tracks are not as dark or as menacing as her older stuff. Clipping also has a new song called Nothing Is Safe and it's okay. Again, David Diggs gives a really, really super duper impressive performance. The song has bars. He's a great rapper. Instrumentally speaking, it's trying to be, you know, kind of scary and Halloween-esque, even though it's still August. And it's it's just kind of 
average, a little flat. Common has a new song called Hercules featuring Swizz Beats. And it's a little preachy, it's a little corny at a few moments, but the beat itself is actually not that bad. So in the middle, Denzel Curry has a track called Shawshank featuring Tate Cobang. And it's a pretty average hardcore trap rap song. The kind of song you would expect from D, uh, from Denzel Curry. The next track is DJ Shadows, Rocket Fuel featuring De La Soul. Um, yeah, both legends. However, um, the song itself doesn't sound really all that great. Uh, the performance is there. The beat is meh. The instrumentals are kind of not that not that great not that refreshing ezra Furman also has a new track called i want to be your girlfriend and while i like that as it has a lot of charisma in the track and i like that um it's it's um it's full of passion you know but um the song overall is not as solid not as strong and it doesn't feel as exciting or as energetic as his or her previous single as Ezra's previous single okay okay oh my gosh I feel like there are 100 guns just pointing at me in all 360 degrees right now anything Fortet has a new track called Dreamer and it's just okay it's pretty average the beat is good but that's to be expected it's Fortet we're talking about here Future also has a new song called 100 Shooters featuring Meek Mill and blah, 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 blah. Meek Mill and Doughboy. And this is a pretty average track as well, uh, with the exception of Meek Mill's verse. His verse, pretty good, pretty solid. But the track overall, average, future, mumble rap, tr track thing. Hobson has a new track called I Don't Want It. And um, instrumentally, it's actually not bad. It doesn't feel like a, a blatant drab Eminem ripoff. Um, even though, you know, he's not like a great rapper or anything, there's nothing all that fun or exciting about this track. Um, Hobson actually explores more of his, you know, sucky life on this track. <laughs> well, basically, what I get from this track is that his life kind of sucks. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> oh man, I, I love myself. <laughs> Up next, uh, High on Fire actually came out with a new EP called Bat Salad. And the title track is a single. And it's okay. I actually like how um, crazy and wild some of the guitar riffs on this track is. They're pretty amazing. However, the performance is not that great either, uh, so here it is. IDK has a new banger type song called 24. It's pretty one note, pretty dry, but it's kind of fun and exciting, I guess. JPEG Mafia has a really weird single that just came out, Jesus Forgive Me, I'm a Thought. And um, yeah, it's... It's weird. It's weird. There are elements of R&B in a chorus. And in the second leg, it just gets super chopped up. In the beginning, it's like JPEG Mafia is trying to force his hardcore flow on top of a smooth, watery beat. It's a really weird, multifaceted track overall. And I'm, I don't know what to feel about it. Uh, anyway, Liam Gallagher has a new song. I said, I, I typed Liam Gallagher here. I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> Liam Gallagher has a new song called Once. And it's okay. It's a pretty nostalgic throwback Brit rock, you know, Brit pop rock track. That's kind of smoother, slower. Uh, but, you know, it's still not bad. It's tolerable, passable. Lil Nas X with his fourth Old Time Road song. His fourth, I believe. And it's called Soul Time Road, and it features RM of BTS. And it's okay. It's like any other Old Time Road song. Old Time Road? Old Town Road. Fuck. I was, I'm really going insane. Uh, Old Town Road. 
it's like any other Old Town Road song. And the reason why I enjoyed the Billy Ray Cyrus one and um, the Billy Ray Cyrus Yardle Boy, you know, Young Thug one is because all of them have chemistry. But on this track, the chemistry is not quite there. But still, whatever. Catchy. It's friggin' catchy. Little Skies going off, also kind of catchy, even though a little cringy as well. And a little generic, you know, emo rap song. Megan The Stallion and Nicki Minaj uh, came out with a track called Hot Girl Summer. And it features Ty Dolla Sign. Oh, yeah, of course it's gonna feature Ty Dolla Sign. Uh, <laughs> and it's okay. It's actually kind of catchy. The performances are fun. Wacky. It's out there, and I like it. Instrumentally, it's just kind of average. After that, Metronomy has a new song called Walking in the Dark. Um, and it's a pretty awkward indie pop song. It does sound a little nice at first, but once it got, you know, once the song went on, it's just a little average. Um, Nakey Jakey has a song called Not Dead Yet, and it's a pretty washed out pop ballad with a really funny music video where he pretends to be goth. And it's actually not bad. It's actually not that bad. It's actually kind of, kind of, kind of fun and, and, uh, kind of sticky. And uh, yeah, there's that. Sam Smith has a new song called How Do You Sleep? And it's just okay. You know, it's another one of those, you know, powerful Sam Smith songs that's gonna get every one of his fans in tears. And uh, it's just really average, you know. It's not exciting, it's kind of bland. However, um, Sam Smith's a good singer and he's a cool dude. Uh, Tool, wow. Tool is back, boys. Tool is back. When they dropped their last album, I was three years old. When Tool dropped their last album, I couldn't even speak proper English. That's how long it had been between 10,000 Days and this track. Fear Inoculum, the title track off of their album, Fear Inoculum, and it's unfortunately kind of average. I hate to say this, Tool is one of my favorite bands, but this song is just kind of middle of the road, run of the mill for Tool. Really average in comparison, um, the guitar riffs are just very Tool-esque, not that interesting. Not that exciting and fun and epic and wild. Uh, not that mathematic. Um, just kind of an average tool song. Uh, after that, Tropical Fuckstorm. Uh, they're back with a new song called Who's My Eugene. And this is a weird song. Really, really weird. Because all the instrumentals and the vocals, they don't go together at all. They're doing their own thing. However, there's this really weird and awkward quality about the song that I kind of like. And then at the end, we have Twin Peaks with Dance Through It, which is actually not a bad indie rock song at all. Not bad. It's not bland like their older stuff, but um, still, it's not that great either. Anyway, let's talk about some of the worst tracks released in the past few weeks. Starting off with Beyonce and Kendrick Lamar with Nile. I hate to say this, but uh, this song is not good. Uh, yeah, it's not really that good. It's a non-song, is what it is. It's another one. It's another one of the songs inspired by Lion King, and Kendrick Lamar isn't even in Lion King. I don't know why is he in the track. Beyonce and Childish Gambino would make way much more sense. I don't know. And while I like that Beyonce and Kendrick Lamar is, col is collaborating, but it's just such a non-song here. It's just the beat isn't really there. 
Uh, and, you know, when, when the beat is not there, you know, at least have a compelling instrumental to push this song forwards. There isn't. And the vocals are just kind of run of the mill. After that, Big Sean has two new songs called Overtime and Single Again. And Big Sean, more like Big Yawn, because these two tracks are really boring, like nothing ever happens. I yawn like 10 seconds into the track single again. After that, Blink-182 has a new song called Dark Side. Ha ha ha, join the dark side. We're 40 years old, but, you know, still, let's have some fun. Uh, <laughs> and it's just a really bland, corny, millennial, washed down pop punk. Uh, Ceremony released another post-punk track that's super bland, super redundant, and super generic. It's not good. Post-punk is my favorite genre. It's my personal genre. If I'm a, if I'm a musical genre, I would be post-punk. And I'm saying that this track is not good. It's titled In the Spirit World Now. Yeah. After that, Chance the Rapper has two new singles and a, a new album, 77 minute long album about his wife. Um, I'm gonna review that later. But anyway, we have the tracks Get a Bag and Hot Shower and both of them are hot garbage. Hot Shower is hot garbage. The beat is probably produced by a 15 year old. The performance is kind of cringy, really dry, really raw and not in a good way. We have to track Get A Bag, and it's kind of boring. The, um, the, uh, the, the vocal performance is kind of excruciating, and the instrumentals, they don't make sense at all. Um, yeah, Get A Bag, more like Get A Bag, because I'm about to puke into this bag. Uh, after that, uh, I don't want to be mean, by the way. I respect Chance. Uh, after, after that, Kill Switch Engage with uh, two new tracks, Unleashed and I Am I Am Broken Too. You're broken too? I am broken too. Let's be friends. We are the broken brothers and we will take on the world because we know th that the society is full of dark lies. Ah. <laughs> yes, uh, this is some garbage millennial pop metal that's garbage it's like if nickelback made metal anyway iggy pop has a new song called james bond and it sounds kind of dumb it sounds kind of dumb especially with the really dry instrumentals and the very deep vocals it's it's a little cringy maybe um the, the instrumentals on Gardenia are super catchy and jangly. Um, that's why it complemented with the deep vocals really well. But on this track, there's none of that. It feels kind of dry. It feels kind of open-ended. It's not that great. And then after that, Little Baby and the Baby has a new track called Baby. And um, yeah. Okay. The instrumentals are kind of weird and pulsating. Uh, but everything else about the song is just really, really generic. After that, Maxo Cream has a new song called The Relays featuring Travis Scott, and it's another really average generic trap rap song that offers nothing. Um, the beat is, is not interesting. The instrumentals are, yeah, just, yeah, kind of subpar. Oh yeah, and then we have the new uh, Rick Ross song called Gold Roses featuring Drake, speaking of subpar and generic. After that, Steve Aoki and Darren Chris, uh, a legitimately good actor. I think that is the Darren Chris, right? Uh, has a new song called Crash Into Me, and it's like a reimagination of an EDM song. And uh, yeah, as expected, it's kind of garbage. Taylor Swift has a new song called The Archer. 
and it sounds like a really, really bland non-song. There's nothing exciting about it, and I don't know why everyone in 2019 is dropping something moody and bland and slow and spacey, and including Taylor Swift here, and it's just not that good. After that, Kagan and Sarah has a new song called I'll Be Back Someday, and it's a super forgettable bland pop song that's kind of cringy. Yeah. And then after that, we have Third Eye Blind with Screamer, and it is another one of those millennial punk rock songs. And it's garbage. It, yeah, it's like that Blink-182 song I mentioned earlier. Tom McDonald, white boy, he's back <laughs> with a track called If I Was Black, and it's whack. He's talking smack on this track. And, uh... Yeah, it's bad. It's really, really bad. It's cringy, and it it's cringy. It's cringy, and it's cringy. I mean, let's just not get into the lyrics and the instrumentals. They're just not worth discussing anymore. Trippy Red has a new song called Mac 10 featuring Little Baby and Little Duke. Another little, and um, it's, uh, it's a pretty bland, generic song okay so let's talk about the uh best songs there's a lot so let's go at first we have sandy alex g with the track hope and it's a and it's a pretty beautiful ballad that's not that crazy not that fast it's humble it's sincere and i love it pretty sweet after that, it's Alex Wiley with the track FYI featuring McJenkins. The instrumentals, they are kinda soft and spacey, but it has a really nice futuristic edge to it that's really refreshing. And of course, the performances, they're there, they're amazing. Angel Olsen is back with a track called All Mirrors, and it's a pretty powerful and catchy and muscular and charismatic indie pop song. And um, really excited for her new album. Ariel Pink has a new song called Stray Here With You. And it's uh, it's a good song. Yeah. It's, um, it's like any other Ariel Pink song, I guess. That's really catchy, fun, a little awkward, tongue-in-cheek. Uh, but um, it's, um, it's also kind of icy, fuzzy, and it's cool. Okay. Uh, after that, we have Ash Nico with Hi, It's Me, and it is a, um, a pop tune, and it's kind of catchy, kind of energetic, kind of exciting, and kind of tasteful. has a nice, awkward edge to it. After that, we have Haley Kiyoko with I Wish, and it's, uh, it's a pop tune. It's very much a, a pop tune designed for the mainstream. Uh, however, it has a lot of energy, it has a lot of flavor, and it's really exciting. Also, the choreography is insane in the music video, and it's pretty fun overall. Bonnie Iver also has a pretty sweet and lighthearted ballad called Faith, and um, it's pretty enjoyable, even though his latest album isn't all that great, and I wouldn't be reviewing his latest album because I don't have enough time, sorry. After that, Black Country New Road has a track called Sunglasses, and it is a really weird spoken word rock fusion, and it's actually really tasteful. It kind of reminds me of Black Meaty a little bit, just very, very slightly, because of the very clunky, you know, hard instrumentals and the really crazy, freaky spoken word passages. Brittany Howard of Alabama Shakes fame has a new track called Stay High, and I love it, absolutely. It's soulful, it's beautiful, it's also catchy and sticky, and it has a lot of heart and passion, and Terry Crews in the music video, pretty nice. After that, Brock Hampton has two new tracks, If You Pray Right, which has a really catchy, kind of little goofy beat that's really sticky and also Boy Bye released yesterday and similarly it has a pretty nice low-key beat that's extremely catchy and once and once again everybody gave really solid performances. 
Caroline Polachek with Ocean of Tears, another really creative and experimental art pop song that has a lot of futuristic edge to it. And then after that, Charlie XCX and Christine and the Queens, Gone. This is my favorite Charlie XCX song in her latest bunch of singles because it's a pop anthem that's super overblown, loud, unapologetic, catchy, and uplifting and bright and it's just really amazing. We have Dram with a new song, uh, The Lay Down featuring her and Watt. And it's a really smooth, sensual, angelic ballad. The vocals are actually amazing here and uh, I'm just really impressed. It's like Dram has ascended to a new level. Dump Him has a track called Dykes to Watch Out For and uh, uh, I hope I don't offend anyone by saying that word. Uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty exciting, youthful, energetic, catchy pop punk song. Fever Ray is back with "I'm Not Done, Still Not Done" mix, and uh, once again, Fever Ray, the Swedish electronic pop artist person um she's back and it's really well produced again some really freaky crazy vocals that are unhinged and uh the beats are crazy fools is back again with the track black bull off of the second part to their everything not lost is everything not saved is lost album and it's a total rock banger it hits hard it's muscular it's catchy it's exciting yes foals up next we have the high woman with redesigning woman and it's basically a um a country woman quartet uh of course brandy carlisle is one of the members and uh i'm not a huge fan of country music but um this song is uh pretty pretty catchy and lively yeah, lively is the is the right word. Also, some impressive vocal work. After that, Idols, they're um, back, I guess. Not really. Uh, more like they're back for the second song in their B-sides with um, I Dream Guillotine. And it's another really enraging, furious, fun, loud, shouty, hardcore punk rock song. And it's uh, it's really amazing. Igloo Ghost has a new track called La Key featuring Kai Whiston and Bobby. And it's another really glitchy, mind bending, glitzy, glossy electronic track. Except on this track, it's even more. Um, it's a little awkward in a way. It's a little drier and rawer. And uh, it, it makes the track even more enjoyable for me. Surprisingly, I kind of like the new Katy Perry song, Small Talk, not only because it's kind of catchy, but also because Katy Perry sounds less dumb on this track than ever. After that, Lana Del Rey has a new track called Looking for America. It's a really slow ballad, but it's actually kind of beautiful, kind of sensual and smooth and sweet, and um, it's pretty nice. O.C.'s has three new songs, Poisoned Stones, which is a really solid um, psych rock garage rock jam, which is really catchy. Heartworm, which is which is a totally insane, batshit insane, um, loud, punk rock, droney, noisy, explosion thing, and it's fantastic, and Captain Loosely which isn't like a great track but it's it's i still like it for how weird it is it is essentially an instrumental track where the entire track is basically these weird bubbly plastic key noises and um i look forward to their new album it sounds like they're all over the place it sounds like they're trying out every single genre that had ever existed in the world after that portrayal of guilt with scarcity 
It is a, a, a screamo track and it's really hardcore, also kind of atmospheric and really energetic and flavorful and I love it. Red Hearth has a song called Half Love and it's another really, really solid rock song with a really badass music video, which I really love. And um, yeah, just really fun performances, some exciting guitar riffs here and there. After that, Richard Dawson, folk music legend. Richard Dawson, in 2017, he dropped Peasants, and it's one of my favorite folk records of the decade, period. He's back with a track jogging, back from the kingdom of Brinik, and um, he's singing about anxiety, he's singing about eBay, he's singing about modern times, and it's pretty fun. It's like lo-fi folk mixed with a bit of rock music, and um, I'm just really happy that he's back. After that, uh, Rico Nasty, Time Flies, and it's a really sugary trap rap song. My gosh. A uh, very sugary trap rap song that's very colorful, flavorful, catchy, and really solid. Like it's not one of those dry... Okay. Someone is having an epileptic seizure outside probably. Uh, but yeah, it's really catchy, really flavorful, and it's so rich in sound. And after that, Squid with the Cleaner. And it's a really freaky, wild, danceable post-punk track that has a lot of charisma and a lot of style. And after that, Sleater Kinney, The Center Won't Hold. It's another Sleater Kinney single that is kind of weird, new, and refreshing. And it's a little more spooky. It's a little more uh, low-key and a little bit more showy. But it's still really interesting sounding and really sticky. Starcrawler has a new song called Bet My Brains. And it's also a really, really solid throwback rock song. Uh, Swain, they're back. Banned from the Netherlands with But Then What and Negative Space, the title track to their latest album. Yes, I didn't know that they would be dropping another album, but here we go. And, um, but then what is a really catchy and solid, um, punk rock tune? A little slow, but, you know, it's Swain. They write some good music. And Negative Space is a straight-up grunge rock song that is, um, good. After that, Vivian Girls with the track Sick. It's a really washed-out indie rock song with a post-punk edge, and it's, Another really sound rich and flavorful song, Whitney with Valley's My Love. And it's a really beautiful and sweet ballad song that's super laid back. After that, I actually kind of enjoy this new Wilco song, Love is Everywhere, Beware. And similar to the Whitney song that I just mentioned a couple seconds ago, it's a really sweet ballad that is really dreamy and it doesn't really try to be that ambitious or anything. At the end we have the track Scatterhead by Yacht and it's another low-key danceable tune that's really catchy and um, really yeah really stylistic charismatic. Okay anyway let's talk about some other stuffs there are a lot of other stuffs to talk about. We have um, the current war trailer, which is really exciting. We have the um, the trailer to Top Gun Maverick. Tom Cruise is back with a sequel to Top Frickin' Gun. Uh, crazy. We have 1917 um, by Sam Mendes. I almost said Sean Mendes. Yeah, Sam Mendes, and I look forward to a really good World War I movie. Uh, and then we have uh, the new Cats trailer, which of course sucked ass. And uh, it's like the Sonic the Hedgehog trailer where the animation just sucks. Literally real people playing cats, and it's garbage. It looks honestly horrifying. But for Sonic the Hedgehog, 
you can still change it, you can still save it. But for this movie, for Cats, it's too late, man. It's too late. After that, Westworld Season 3 trailer is out. The official trailer is out. And I look forward to it uh, a lot. And, uh, you know, I really look forward to the Jonah, Nolan, Lisa, Joy mindfuck. The finale of Season 3 is going to be like eight timelines happening at the same time or something. And, al and also, 13 reasons why Season 3 is happening. And it has the dumbest trailer ever um first of all it's a well shot trailer it's well shot and well edited i have to admit myself however it seems to me that it's really obvious that the writers of 13 reasons why are beginning to realize that the story is just too boring and too uninteresting so they have to turn 13 reasons why to a really sappy faux edgy teen drama about mental illness to a murder mystery and by doing that they revealed in the trailer that Bryce Walker is dead they just spoiled the season I mean I know it's the point of the season but it's just really stupid you you're trying to make a murder mystery tv show all of a sudden and you just suddenly reveal a death of a of a major character what? Uh, anyhow, uh, Marvel announced Phase 4, uh, the first phase after the Infinity Saga, and it's pretty exciting. I look forward to a lot of the movies there. I look forward to The Eternals. I look forward to Blade, Mahershala Ali, also Kumail Nanjiani, and Angelina Jolie is in The Eternals. How in the fuck? Did Kevin Feige get Angelina Jolie? How did he do it? How? <coughs> and also Shang-Chi. I look forward to that. Uh, the first Asian Marvel movie. Um, and uh, yeah, also a bunch of other Marvel related stuffs like uh, Loki. Look forward to that. We have WandaVision. We have Black Widow movie, which is also really cool. Doctor Strange 2 Multiverse Madness is coming out too. I love Doctor Strange. And maybe I'll like this one as well. Also, uh, Hawkeye is getting a standalone movie as well. Or maybe TV show. I don't know. Um, Falcon. Falcon. Falcon Winter Soldier is also getting a standalone TV show, I think. And um, what else? Uh, yeah, Thor 4. There is a fourth movie. And it's also directed by Taika Waititi. He's back. It's called Love and Thunder, which is a trash movie title. I'm 100% sure that they will change the title at some point. Actually, 90% uh, because it's Taika Waititi. Uh, but um, yeah, it's going to be exciting. going to be exciting. Uh, Wanda is also going to be in Doctor Strange 2, so I look forward to that. So what are your thoughts on these songs? From 1 to 10, how much did you rate them? Like if you like them, hate if you hate them, and subscribe if you want more. Thanks for watching. And also, the Lighthouse trailer is out. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Five weeks, two days, help me to recollect. I, I will definitely watch it.